I was cast down, stripped of my power, exiled. I suffered indignities and fell into darkness. Was Kreia secretly sexually assaulted off screen during her fateful exile from the Sith? And if so, why would Obsidian deign to force such indignities upon her? Kreia's fall is a short but visceral scene, especially by Star Wars standards. Every frame a painting, each nuance deliberate, and every blow felt. Later, each of the Sith fall at the hands of the Exile, who almost acts as an agent of karma, or perhaps more accurately, an arbiter of the will of the Force itself. The galaxy needs its betrayers. There are dark places in the galaxy where few tread, ancient centers of learning, of knowledge, but I did not walk alone. To be united by hatred is a fragile alliance at best. To understand the Sith's actions, we must first understand why Kreia was exiled. And although her fall shows in detail the disharmony between her and her former students, it never outwardly states why she was forcibly expunged from the Triumvirate. However, a single voice line was originally recorded for Kray's fall and cut from the final clip, which states, But my will was not law. There were disagreements, ambition, and hunger for power. I did not wish to kill you, so they cast me down, stripped me of my power, exiled me. The implications of Kreia protecting the exile are far reaching. It was the Sith who were hunting errant Jedi at the time, and Kreia tells her baleful students not to touch one of their sworn enemies? Of course there would be dissonance from her former apprentices. But then begs the question, why was Kreia so intent on sparing the Exile in the first place? Well, the Exile, thanks to her exposure to the mass shadow generator on Malachor V, represented a dead spot in the Force, which Kreia could spread. And it's revealed to Kreia that not not only could the Force be killed, but also people could survive without it, and she deeply respected the Exile for this ability, as most would die as we see later in the game. Or in Kreia's words, And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But why does Kreia hate the very energy field that she's become so reliant on? It is said that the Force has a will. It has a destiny for us all. I wield it, but it uses us all, and that is abhorrent to me, because I hate the Force. I hate that it seems to have a will, that it would control us to achieve some measure of balance when countless lives are lost. But in you, I see the potential to see the Force die, to turn away from its will, and that is what pleases me. You are beautiful to me, Exile. A dead spot in the Force, an emptiness in which its will might be denied. So, Kreia's ultimate goal in KOTOR is to kill the Force by creating more echoes throughout. Unsurprisingly, this act of Force snuffing is deeply personal to her two counterparts, Nihilus and Sion directly, as the Force itself sustains their very being. Essentially, killing the Force would be akin to pulling the life support from both of them. Even flirting with the very idea reveals Kreia's contempt that her former students rely far too much on the energy field as a crutch. Just as Kreia despises the Force for its wanton destruction, she despises those who rely on it, but then begs the question, why does Kreia use the Force? To which she answers, I use it as I would use a poison, and in the hopes of understanding it, I will learn the way to kill it. But perhaps these are the excuses of an old woman who has grown to rely on a thing she despises. 
Hence why I believe when Kraya is betrayed, Obsidian deliberately contrasts the Sith's attack to mirror their own personal aspects. For example, Nihilus is the Lord of Hunger. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the Force than a living thing. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. When we see Nihilus attacking Kraya, he cuts her off from the Force, as Nihilus is the Lord of Hunger, and as such, he needs nourishment from consuming Force energy, including living beings. So, without the Force, Nihilus makes sure Kraya can feel that exact same all-consuming hunger, the very thing she despises and he depends as she lies there helpless. There are techniques within the Force against which there is no defense. But what about the Lord of Pain? Conversely, Sion in turn expresses himself through visceral violence, choosing not to use the Force or even a lightsaber, but raw, blunt trauma, as he himself is stated to be only held together by hate and agony. I fight because it is the power that the Force fills me with. To survive. To inflict the pain on others. I can die a hundred times exile and still I will rise again as strong as before. So too can Kraya experience his very being of blinding pain, his existence like a raw exposed nerve and without said pain he would crumble. It should be noted that Kray is a formidable opponent without the Force or physically at her advanced age. Yet her words as the betrayer are so potent and calculated, I believe that's why Sion opens his attack with choosing to silence her by deliberately covering her muffled screams as a statement against her words. And he further expresses this sentiment about Kray when the player is confronted by Sion later, saying of her insidious verbiage. After all that's happened, still you live. You are difficult to kill. For one as limited as you, perhaps. To have fallen so far and learned nothing, that is your failing. The failure is yours. No longer do your whispers crawl within my skull. No longer do I suffer beneath teachings that weaken us. So, it's evident that the developers at Obsidian went to lengths to foreshadow each of the Sith Lord's weaknesses in a single clip, but why do I believe there is a sexual undertone present? Well, Obsidian themselves are no strangers to provocative storytelling, as proven by the depths of depravity and debauchery seen in Fallout New Vegas. Yet, admittedly, the Star Wars universe is a lot tamer and shies away from controversial topics. So anything inappropriate would have to be subtext at best. Although they do sneak some innuendo in there, like when Kraya talks about men's attachment to their lightsabers. Indeed. A Jedi tool and a Sith weapon. And why do you need such a thing? Then listen to me. There is much weight, much craving attached to such a tiny thing of light. For the male, it seems to have an inordinate importance. But we shall leave such male preoccupations for philosophers and cultural historians. I bet Kraya felt pretty impotent herself without her lightsaber when Nihilus casually flung her into that pillar. But there is still choice, is there not? Ah, but at what point does the power the Force exerts submerge any attempt at choice or free will? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing, and I refuse to believe that is true. You have taken a complicated question, Servant of Atris, and you have trivialized it with your answer and lack of experience. But where is the evidence, if there is any, that Kraya was assaulted by Sion off-screen, and why? Well, starting with the why, we know that even for Jedi, love is forbidden, as it can lead to the dark side of the Force. The Jedi, with their damnable sense of over-caution, would tell you love is something to avoid. Thankfully, anyone who's even partially alive knows that's not true. Love doesn't lead to the dark side. 
passion can lead to rage and fear and can be controlled. But passion is not the same thing as love. Controlling your passions while being in love, that's what they should teach you to beware. But love itself will save you, not condemn you. Love causes pain, certainly. Inevitably, love is going to lead to as much sorrow and regret as it does joy. And how do you deal with the bad part of love is what determines your character. What determines the dark side's hold over you. A life without risk is boring. You want love, you've got to fight for it. We also find out that love is something Scion cannot even romance the idea of. H keeps his twisted and cracked body together to give in to love and let go of his hate is tantamount to death. And we also learn that Scion is jealous of Kreia's love and admiration of the exile, which stands in direct contrast of her contempt for Scion. I hate you because you are beautiful to me. And in that weakness lies death. Perhaps in that weakness is the death of my master as well. Her weakness is you. The Lord of Pain's fear of letting go and reliance on hate makes him more a base animal than Sith. And so his relationship with Kreia is akin to an abusive one. Kreia repeatedly shows him how pathetic he is. And instead of embracing the lesson, he uses her contempt as fuel for hate believing he will somehow still curry her favor, never accepting only by discarding the Force like the Exile did, would Kreia truly respect Scion. And so the cycle continues. After all that's happened, still you live. You are difficult to kill. For one as limited as you, perhaps. To have fallen so far and learned nothing, that is your failing. But surely Obsidian would never deign to insinuate a senior Sith lady, no matter how treacherous, would be sexually abused? Well, consider the following. Sion and Nihilus choose to punish Kreia openly, yet in an almost inconceivable act for the Sith, they allow her to live. Perhaps it was due to Nihilus severing her ties to the Force and deemed she would gradually die. Or perhaps Sion wanted her to live in pain and disgrace. Or perhaps assaulting her sexually off screen screen was Sion's attempt to admonish her for her perceived betrayal of her students to save her coveted exile, which for most of the game, Sion could not even fathom, which we'll further explore soon. Why? Why did she choose you? What makes you able to defeat me? Defeat me here? However, for both of the Sith, Sion and Nihilus suffer bitter mockeries in the eyes of the Force in the direct way that they are defeated, which illustrates to a degree the Force has a sense of irony, or at the very least, the original storytellers went to pains to have their hypocrisy come full circle. Nihilus, later attempting to drain the Exile, is vanquished as the Exile is a dead spot in the Force, leaving his hunger unsatiated and the Lord of Hunger exposed. By contrast, Sion dies due to his acceptance that hate will leave him in a perpetual state of agony for naught, and that Kreia's contempt for his supposed power is not without reason. And on top of this, I dare say, Sion's love for the exile if you play a female character, which is actually canon. Just as Kreia admits her love for the exile, so does Sion admit similar feelings. You and her are alike, yet different in all the ways that matter. And I hate you as I hate her. I hate you because you crawl within my head as she does. But your presence holds no thoughts, no teachings. You are just there, unspoken. I hate you because you are beautiful to me. And in that weakness lies death. Perhaps in that weakness is the death of my master as well. Her weakness is you, Kreia. She will try to break you, to teach you how far someone can fall. Her weakness is you, as you are mine. I am glad to leave this place at last.
The Lord of Hate cannot survive with love. What more poignant karmic justice would there be that Sion lusts after the exile, but dies unfulfilled and unable to express his love physically or emotionally as a direct punishment for Sion choosing to force himself physically on Kreia in his base effort to assert his dominance over her. Yet we see for all of Sion's efforts, Kreia remains dominant, having been beaten and assaulted and had her hand cut off, yet everything Sion does to Kreia in a misguided attempt to prove he is superior is later mocked by Kreia as she casually breaks him again and again, proving he is but a slave to the dark side. It has been some time. You were a fool to return. I spared you once. I will not do so again. Spare me? Ah, oh, yes. No, you simply did not learn the lesson I sought to teach. That your strength is as meaningless as the strength of my hand. Why have you returned? Because now I understand why the exile did what she did. There is much to be done. But where is the tangible correlation that Sion may have assaulted Kreia off screen? Well, as with everything Darth Treya, the answer lies in her cryptic words. During Kreia's fall before the screen fades to black and she falls into darkness with Sion standing over her and Nihilus watching, she makes a point to say that she suffered indignities. I suffered indignities and fell into darkness which is admittedly a broad term that casts a wide net. However, there's only one other time in game Kreia uses this specific term, and it's when she reads the smuggler Atenrad's mind, who also shares romantic feelings towards a female exile. Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings even though they are fixed. At other times, he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. What's notable is that Kreia specifically links sexual indignities, and I was surprised to see that internet commenters had caught the correlation as well. But it was actually the Ozio file who pointed this out to me originally. His channel is linked on screen. Be sure to subscribe as our podcast on KOTOR will drop soon. In summary, I believe that nothing is coincidence, and Obsidian had Treya suffer one of the worst indignities imaginable only to rise again was the outline that no matter the Sith's victories, labors, or even atrocities, committing acts purely in the name of the dark side was the road to damnation. The Force itself would always correct the balance equal in proportion, and Sion brought his fate upon himself. And above all else, Kreia died knowing the exile was worthy of her admiration, respect and love. A validation that Sion craved, yet ultimately never achieved. I would have killed the galaxy. To preserve you, I would have let the galaxy die.